greatest figures of the silent screen was that master of makeup and character portrayal, Mr. Lon Chaney. Unfortunately, throughout his entire career, Lon Chaney never had the opportunity to make a screen comedy. All of his roles cast him as a grim-faced, humorous character who never smiled and sometimes didn't even look human. You know, like Charlton Heston. <laughs> well, we're going to remedy that situation tonight as we fracture a Lon Chaney masterpiece, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. And in order to give Mr. Chaney a chance to play in a comedy, our version is titled Dinky Dunstan, Boy Cheerly. Big mistake. <laughs> Yes, you guessed it. It's the campus of the University of Southern California just a few short years ago. Even then, as the day approached for the big game with Stanford, the USC students displayed their traditional air of quiet determination. <laughs> this grim resolve was also apparent at the Spartan training tables of the varsity squad. <laughs> Even the dormitories of the Guggenheim Fellows rang with the cry, Everybody up! Come on! We're hanging the coach in effigy! <laughs> but of all the student body, there was one whose calm resolution was greater than all the rest. At every pep rally, someone was sure to call for... Me! Dinky Dunstan! Yes, it was Dinky Dunstan, wealthy young phys ed major and the school's head cheerleader. Dink was a natural cheerleader, with a wiry frame, a strong voice, and plenty of school spirit. Yeah. As you might expect, Dinky was also president of his fraternity, Chi Ogma Delta, a rugged group of athletic he-men. Hi! The Chi Ogs were renowned for their scholarly behavior, as well as for their Saturday night soirees, which featured... Thoughtful discussions by a coterie of brilliant young college philosophers. Hot dog! Chopin Hard never had it so good! <laughs> it was at just such an occasion that Dinky Dunstan pushed through a crowd of merrymakers and first set eyes on Mary Lou Beasley. Not only was Mary Lou a dancing fool, she was also the team star halfback. <laughs> Say that Dinky was smitten would be putting it mildly. Actually, he was stoned. In the days that followed, Dink tried to forget about Mary Lou in the rigors of cheering practice. Two, four, six, eight, who do we appreciate? Yay, team, team! Yet more and more he neglected everything while dreaming of the pretty halfback with the ruby lips, the sparkling eyes, and the remarkable record of completed passes. As you might expect, Dinky's dawdling and lack of concentration began to affect his studies adversely. He was failing in anthropology. Although he loved the subject. <laughs> He's getting a zero in weightlifting also. <laughs> Dinky was even failing in his favorite class, the rope climb. I can't help it. This darn rope keeps stretching. <laughs> <laughs> you mean old Dink might flank out before the stamp again? Yep. <laughs> Ooh. Again? We can't win a game without old Dink cheering us on. Come on, we gotta think of something fast. And to a man and woman, the students rallied to Dinky's aid. It was Mary Lou Beasley herself who persuaded Dink's weightlifting instructor, Mr. Feeney, to plead his case before the chancellor. I'll do it. <laughs> you know the rules well as I do, Feeney. Dunstan has to pass at least one subject. Those are harsh words, Chancellor. Well, perhaps you're right. Very well. I'll enroll him in Dean Stucker's ballroom dancing class. I'm sure even he can pass that. Oh, sir, how can I ever thank you? Hmm? Yeah. Just say that we beat Stanford. I got ten bucks on the game. <laughs> so that night, at the Dean's dancing class, Shall we warm up? Imagine me dancing. I'm ready. Dean Stucker. <laughs> Don't 
Dean. Yes, Dan. <laughs> what do we appreciate? Two parsons. What do we appreciate? <laughs> Remember your dancing, not cheerleading. Now, you listen. Me? <laughs> one, two, three, four. Who are we for? One, two, three, four. Who are we for? Now you're getting it, boy. Let's try a lift, shall we? Everything. No! He's passed my course! Remember, Dean Stucker was a 185-pound man. Throwing him off that balcony gives Dick a passing grade in weightlifting. Oh, goody! Well, the game that year was a classic. As you can see, it was played under the old Big Ten rules, which allowed unlimited substitutions and everything else. <laughs> and when things looked blackest and Stanford led 90 to nothing, a clarion call rang out. Hey, gang, let's hear it for the team. It's easy. One, two, red, white, and blue. We are the boys from Southern Cali. Team, 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 team. Inspired by their cheerleader, U.S., he sprang to the attack and was pulverized by their opponent. That year, the USC lost 99 to nothing. But when it moves, we got the spirit. Come on, gang, let me hear it. And they did let him hear it. Dickie Dunstan, rock dead! That's not what I call the old Trojan spirit. <laughs> and so, when the University of Southern California settled back into its academic torpor after the game, Dinky Dunstan was no longer on campus. Rejected by his classmates, he did the only thing a boy like Dinky could do. Come on, you fighting Irish! Yes, he transferred to Notre Dame. <laughs>